Today, I'm gonna to show you how to grow microgreens inside of an egg carton. If you are new to our channel, we do all kinds of videos on growing as we try to provide a lot of clarity and understanding around how to grow some amazing greens. If you wanna tag along and become a believer, be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get notified anytime we release new videos. If you guys wouldn't mind, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button because it really does help out our channel. Let's get growing. So I had some of these egg cartons left over from our local grocery store and I wanted to know, can I grow microgreens in it? Well, the first thing I wanted to do was first find out what it's actually made of. I figured that it was made of some sort of paper product and looking into it, I did find out that it is a pressed paper pulp that has been recycled. The paper that is used for the egg cartons is generally made at the end of the recycled paper's life when it can no longer be recycled. So it is cool to know that this is a paper product and this is going to be biodegradable and I can put this into my compost. So I'm excited to grow with this. Now that we know where our cartons come from and what they're made of, let's try growing in some. Today, I'm gonna be growing some purple sprouting broccoli in a colorful radish blend. Let's go ahead and start with the purple sprouting broccoli. The first thing I'm gonna do is start by getting a heaping two cups of soil and start preparing my egg carton. This egg carton has a pedestals formed into it and they can be a little awkward, so I'm gonna try cutting them off. In cutting these off, I realize that I'm leaving some big holes open, but I do find a solution for this in just a moment. To make sure that the soil doesn't end up on my counters, I place another pressed paper container underneath of the cut one just to catch anything that falls through those holes. Now let's start distributing our soil across the egg carton and into the egg spaces mainly. So what we're gonna be using today is our favorite soil, which is the Burpees Organic Potting Mix. This is a great seed starting mix. It has a very light NPK of 0 0.12, 0 0.12, 0 0.12. It is great for germination and growth, and you can add your own nutrients to it if you'd like. For this grow, we're not gonna be adding any additional nutrients. We're just gonna lightly tamp the soil to get some even growth and make sure that everything grows at the same height. You can see that some of this is ending up on the top lid of the carton, and to get that back into the tray, all I do is just close that top lid and it just knocks it straight back into it. Now to solve the issues of the gaps in the tray, I plug them by reversing the pedestals that I cut off and push them back into the open slots. Problem solved. Our egg carton is now a tray with soil and it is ready for seeds. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be using some purple sprouting broccoli seeds and I got these from True Leaf Market. I'm gonna take two teaspoons total and spread it as evenly as I can across all of the egg spaces. I wanna avoid clumping as much as I can, but still doing a good job to make sure that I stay within those little egg spaces as that's where most of the soil is gonna be. Now that I have my seeds in there, it is time to water. For this, I'm just using a little hand sprayer and I have some room temperature tap water in there. You can use distilled, purified, or filtered water, whatever water you prefer to use. For this, again, I'm just using tap water and it works really well. The goal here is to get the medium wet, but not saturated. You do not want this dripping through the bottom of the carton onto your countertop, and you don't wanna be suffocating the roots with water. Now, if you would like, at this step, you can sprinkle a little bit of soil over top of the seeds in case you're worried about not getting good germination. But for us, all we really gotta do is just close that lid. What this will do is it traps in that humidity and it helps the seeds to crack open. And I'm gonna place this right next to some of our house plants. That way it gets a little bit of that good green energy. Now that I've got my first egg carton out of the way, it is time to do the second one. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna repeat the exact same process that I did for the first egg carton, except for this carton, I'm leaving the pedestals intact to see how they will affect the growth. I also used one tablespoon total of colorful radish mix from True Leaf Market. Once I finished seeding this, I gave it its first solid watering and then I placed it near the other egg carton. Now we are into germination. We are on day two of this grow and from this point forward, what we did is miss twice daily. We missed once in the morning and once in the evening. Again, the goal here is to keep it wet and damp but not saturated. Too much water will choke the roots and it'll clog up the soil. It can cause seed rot and root rot, damping off, and all kinds of issues. So you just wanna really make sure that you don't overwater these trays. The water can also flow through the pressed paper, so it's best to place a cloth or something underneath the cartons. I discovered this a little bit too late after I'd already gotten some water on my counters and got a little bit of a water stain, but I was able to get it out. And what we're gonna be doing now is waiting for these seeds to crack open and push out their roots and their first leaves. The first leaves on a radish and broccoli are embryotic leaves called cotyledons. The radish are germinating really well. The tap roots are coming out and you can see their fuzzy little roots stem from it. This is the exciting part because this is when they start to really, really shoot out. And I am so excited to see how this growth progresses. The broccoli are also pushing out of their shells, so we are getting some good germination to start. 
These are still not ready to go into light, so back they go into germination. The radish are really expanding that taproot, and they are nearly pushed out of the seeds shells. The same thing is happening with the broccoli. I'm very happy with the germination right now, but these are still not ready for light, so back into germination they go. All right, we are on day five. So let's go ahead and first take a look at the radish microgreens. As you can see, a lot of the cotyledons have pushed out they're beginning to stand up, and a lot of these roots have done a great job of getting dug down into the medium. I would say about 80% of these seeds are ready, and they're looking awesome. What's really funny is to see this one little seed stuck up here in the top. Poor little thing, just won't have a chance to germinate. I'm gonna go ahead and get some water added to these, and let's take a look at our broccoli. Opening up our broccoli tray, let me scoot this out of the way first, I can see that we also have really great germination here. Towards the edges, you're usually gonna see the slowest germination, but overall in the middle of this, we are seeing some really, really great growth. Again, the cotyledons are pushing up, the stems are standing up straight, and these are getting ready to go into the light. I'm also gonna give these a nice watering, and I think it is time to introduce them into the light. So I'm gonna go ahead and position my egg cartons right next to this LED light that I have. I really do like this light. This is something that we got to put on our countertop to help out with our house plants as well as some microgreen grows whenever we do them on our counters. It does a really great job, and I love the fact that the light is actually adjustable in its height. And it kind of blends in a little bit. I mean, it does stick out, but you know, we're plant people, so we like it. And I actually make a little bit of a mistake here. Now I'm positioning the radish first, closest to the light, and then now I'm gonna go ahead and position that broccoli right behind it. And the reason this is a little bit of a mistake is that radish grow very, very fast, and broccoli do as well, but just not as fast. So what's gonna happen is that radish that's closer to this light source is probably gonna stand up taller than the broccoli, and we're gonna block a little bit of that light. So let's see how this progresses. Now, if you don't have a light available, what you can also do is place this on a window seal with direct or indirect sunlight. Really, I think about four to five hours of direct or indirect sunlight would do the job. Sometimes if you get too little light, they will come out a little bit stringier and not as full on their leaves, but they are still a very healthy crop. So just whatever you got, be sure to use it. Now, this is where the fast growth begins. Look how substantially these have grown after their first 24 hours in the light and they are just looking so happy. I'm loving the vibrant colors that are coming off these radish, and overall, everything is looking very healthy. All we gotta do is just keep these moist, so I'm gonna give these another nice watering. Day seven. As you guys can see, these are continuing to shoot up in size, and they're growing so incredibly fast, and a lot more of these colors are coming out on the radish, and overall, again, everything is looking absolutely beautiful. I'm loving the growth on all of these, and I'm really excited to see how these are gonna look in the end. As for the broccoli, I'm loving the deep, deep greens that I'm seeing on these cotyledons, and the stems look beautiful, and I believe I'm seeing a little bit of purple in there as well, which is a really great sign. As this is purple sprouting broccoli, it is a beautiful crop if you get that purple in the stem. It seems like these microgreens are loving this little light right here, so I am very happy with this. Everything looks healthy and happy, get it watered, and I'll see you guys in a few days. Day 10, harvest day. These look amazing. The cotyledons have developed beautifully and we have some deep greens with vibrant colors popping through them, such as the purples and the pinks coming off the radish and also the stems of the broccolis. The growth is very consistent across both of these and we have a nice healthy looking canopy on both of these trays. I am seeing that they're leaning a little bit towards the light. So again, I think this would have been great to put that broccoli just on the inside and the radish on the outside. That way it doesn't block light. So I am seeing that we are reaching kind of the maximum height for microgreens, especially for radish. They grow very tall, very fast. If we don't harvest these, they're gonna end up falling all over and it's just a lot better to go ahead and harvest them at this point. The stems on these crops are absolutely beautiful and I'm loving everything about these trees. Trays. The egg cartons held up well throughout this grow, but we just had to be aware that they are porous and will absorb and pass through some water. I ended up finding out around like day seven that these had slightly leaked onto the counter. And what I did is I took a towel, I placed that underneath, and then that prevented any further issues with this. All right, let's go ahead and start with harvesting some of this broccoli. As for the supplies that we're gonna need, first, obviously you're gonna need your microgreens to harvest. If you don't have any microgreens, then why do you have a harvesting equipment? The second thing you're gonna need is a knife or scissors, kind of your choice here. I pull out two knives just to give you some examples of what you can use. One is a paring knife. The other is just kind of a standard kitchen chopping knife. As for the scissors, any kitchen shears would work. Personally, I like using knives though. We are also gonna need some containers to harvest into. Today, I'm gonna to be using two reusable containers that are about 32 ounces in size. Okay, let's go ahead and start harvesting with some of these garden shears. Now, the first thing I wanna do is kind of push the microgreens out of the way. That way I get a clear visual of the base stems of where I'm gonna cut. Now, I wanna cut just above the grow medium. You do not wanna get any of this soil into your harvest. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to do kind of a little bit of cleanup to make sure you don't get any of that in your food. 
Taking a look at this first cut, these look beautiful. I'm loving the deep green on these. They look very fat and very healthy, which is a great sign for this first harvest. And over there, you can actually see some of the roots coming off the stems, which is pretty wild. All right, let's go ahead and get these put into our container. Okay, I'm gonna do one more cut here with the scissors. Again, these are my favorites. I feel that they're a little bit slower and they're slightly challenging to use for me personally, though they are much safer to use than a knife. I'm gonna switch over to my knife here, and this is my chopping knife. And I love this. I've sharpened this knife very well, and that's what you want for harvesting, a very, very sharp knife. You don't want to be kind of dragging this knife a lot, trying to chop through these stems. You want to glide through easily. If you get any of these seeds stuck in the bottom of your stems, what you can do is just kind of try to knock them out a little bit. Or if you want to be careful, what you can do is take your knife and chop off the base of the stem and any kind of debris that was stuck in it. Okay, I finished harvesting this first tray, and it looks like we got a lot of produce out of this. Taking a close look at this grow medium and the soil that's left over, you can see how these roots have gone wild. That is not mold, that is roots trying to crawl across this, finding anything that they can to dig into to get some nutrients and some water. It is wild to see how quickly and how vigorously microgreen roots can go. Looking at our harvest, this will go a long way. This may not seem like a lot of produce, but I can use this for several sandwiches and on a few pizzas and some tacos and even on some salads. And believe me, microgreens may be small, but they pack a huge punch and this will go a long, long way. All right, now it's time to go ahead and harvest our colorful radish mix, which I am really excited to do. Before we do that though, I need to get my area cleaned up. So I'm gonna knock any of the debris that fell onto the counter into my extra egg carton container. I'm gonna do this so that I can put this into my compost and have it break down. I'm gonna pull on some of these cut stems and pull out the soil so you guys can see the bottom of this root structure. These roots are very happy looking. They look very healthy. They were a beautiful white cream color and they have grown very vigorously. You could actually use a similar technique for seed starting and then just pull out each individual little egg space and plant that directly into your garden. All right, so the same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and set my container on the side. I'm just gonna kind of push them out of the way so that I can get a visual on the base, cut just above the soil. Now let's go ahead and take a first look at this cut. So these radish, you can see how tall they are. They're just kind of falling all over the place, but they look beautiful. I'm loving the greens, I'm loving the purples, I'm loving the pinks. All these colors look exceptional and I cannot wait to see how much we get from this harvest. Cue awesome harvest montage. All right, we have finished harvesting this. I'm just gonna pick up anything else that kind of fell over that I can save and toss that into my container. We had a great harvest. Look how full this whole thing is. I believe this is a 32 ounce container. I'll double check this here in a little bit, but it looks absolutely stuffed and that radish is gonna be amazing. Now radish can be a little bit spicier and what I like about this mix is you get a mix of some of the spicy and some of the more mild, like the Rambo radish. Generally the more purple ones can be a lot more mild and some of the pink ones can be the spiciest. All right guys, so here I'm gonna show you this. This is a polypropylene container and it's BPA free and I believe it holds 5.2 cups and 1.2 liters is what it says in the top corner over there. Before I toss these in the compost, let's do the same thing and try to pull some of this out and take a look at the roots. You guys can see how crazy these root structures are on this. It's actually growing through the container itself and trying to grow into the towel, or it would have been trying to grow into my countertop. So it does show you how porous those containers are. And overall, I think that those look great. Look at these root structures. They have just grown so aggressively. And the thing that I love is that all the roots look very white and healthy and happy. So let's go ahead and set these containers here side by side and take a look at our harvest. These radish microgreens look beautiful. I'm loving the colors, like I said, from the very get-go. These things are just amazing, and colorful radish mix is a very accurate description. As for the broccoli, we got a very abundant harvest and I love the growth on them as well. I would have loved to see a little bit more purple in the stem, but I think that had we had them closer to the light, we would have gotten that. I think they were just a little bit too far out of the light and we have noticed that in the past, if microgreens don't get sufficient light, sometimes they don't show as much coloration as they can. I'm gonna go ahead and mix these two together just to take a look at them in a bowl so you guys can get an idea of how much we got from two very easy to grow egg containers. This was so simple from start to finish and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I am really excited to enjoy these microgreens. I'm gonna be using this radish in my breakfast and the broccoli's probably around lunch, dinner time and salads, pastas, pizzas, you name it. All right guys, that is it for this video. I wanted to know if you can grow some abundant microgreens inside of an egg carton and I have found out that yes, you can absolutely grow a ton of microgreens inside of a biodegradable egg carton. 
Now you can also use a plastic egg carton or any takeout tray that you get and you just wanna reuse it and repurpose it and try to give it a new life and find something of value for it to do. I'm glad I was able to put a little bit more use into these egg cartons right before they went into the compost and I am very happy with the harvest that we got. I would give this grow two thumbs up. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know I really enjoyed doing this grow and sharing with you guys how easy it is to grow these microgreens at home inside of an egg carton. If you guys have other fun ways of growing microgreens, be sure to drop them in the section below and I'd love to try those out at some point or just see how you guys have grown in the past. If you have any questions, again, same thing, drop them in the comment section below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both out on the grow farms and our website is www.onthegrow.net where we have lots of great information on growing, grow guides, crop seeding density guides, and all kinds of other information. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and keep on believing.